Section twenty eight of the Phenomenology of Mind, Volume two, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, translated by James Black Bailey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter seven C Revealed Religion, Part two. Imaginative presentation constitutes the characteristic form in which spirit is conscious of itself in this religious communion this form is not yet the self-consciousness of spirit which has reached its notion as notion the mediating process is still incomplete in this connection of being and thought then there is a defect spiritual life is still cumbered with an unreconciled diremption into a hither and a yonder a here and a beyond the content is the true content but all its moments when placed in the element of mere presentation have the character not of being conceptually comprehended but of appearing as completely independent aspects externally related to one another in order that the true content may also preserve its true form when before consciousness the latter must necessarily pass to a higher plane of mental development where the absolute substance is not intuitively apprehended but conceptually comprehended and where consciousness is for itself brought to the level of its self-consciousness in the way this has already taken place objectively or for us who have analyzed the process of experience we have to consider this content as it exists in its consciousness absolute spirit is content that is how it exists in the form of its truth but its truth consists not merely in being the substance or the inherent reality of the religious communion nor again in coming out of this inwardness into the objectivity of perceptual and presentational thought but in becoming concrete actual self reflecting itself into self and being subject this then is the process which spirit realizes in its communion this is its life what this self-revealing spirit is in and by itself is therefore not brought out by the rich and full content of its life being so to say untwined and reduced to its original and primitive strands to the ideas for instance presented before the minds of the first imperfect religious communion or even to what the actual human being incarnating the divine spirit has spoken this reversion to the primitive and elementary is based on the instinct to get at the notion and ultimate principle but it confuses the origin in the sense of the immediate existence of the first historical appearance with the pure simplicity of the notion by thus impoverishing the life of spirit by clearing away the idea of the communion and its action with regard to its idea there arises therefore not the notion but bare externality and particularity merely the historical manner in which spirit once upon a time appeared the soulless recollection of an ideally presented historical figure and its past spirit is content of its consciousness to begin with in the form of pure substance in other words it is content of its pure consciousness this element of thought is the process of descending into existence the sphere of particularity the middle term between these two is their synthetic connection the consciousness of passing into otherness the process of ideal presentation as such the third stage is the return from representation in idea and from that otherness in other words it is the element of self-consciousness itself these three movements constitutes the life of spirit its resolution into separate parts when it enters the form of presentation consists in its taking on a determinate mode of being this determinateness however is nothing but one of its moments its detailed process thus consists in spreading its nature over its various moments entering every one each being an element in its composition and since each of these spheres is self-complete this reflection into itself is at the same time the transition into another sphere of its being ideal presentation constitutes the middle term between pure thought and self-consciousness as such and is merely one of the determinate forms at the same time however as has been shown the character belonging to such presentation that of being synthetic connection is spread over all these elements and is their common characteristic 
the content itself which we have to consider has partly been met with already as the idea or presentation of the unhappy and the believing types of consciousness in the case of the unhappy despairing consciousness however the peculiarity lies in the content being produced from consciousness and longingly desired wherein the spirit can never be satiated nor find rest because the content is not yet its own content inherently and essentially or in the sense of being its substance in the case of the believing consciousness again this content has been regarded as the impersonal being of the world as the essentially objective content of presentative thought a pictorial thinking that seeks to escape the actual world altogether and consequently has not the certainty of self-consciousness a certainty which is cut off from it partly as being conceit of knowledge partly as being pure insight the consciousness of the religious communion on the other hand possesses the content as its substance just as the content is the certainty the communion has of its own spiritual life spirit represented at first as substance in the element of pure thought is thus primarily the eternal being simple self-identical which does not however have this abstract meaning of being but the meaning of absolute spirit yet spirit consists not in being a meaning not in being the inner but in being the actual the real simple eternal being would therefore be spirit merely in empty phrase if it stopped at ideational pictorial thought and went no further than the expression of simple eternal being simple being however because it is abstraction is in point of fact the inherently negative is indeed the negativity of reflective thought or negativity as found in being per se that is it is absolute distinction from itself its pure process of becoming its other qua essential being it is merely in itself purely implicit or for us but since this purity of form is just abstraction or negativity it is for itself it is the self the notion it is thus objective and since presentational thinking apprehends and expresses as an event what has just been expressed as the necessity of the notion it will be said that the eternal being produces for itself an other but in this otherness it has likewise ipso facto returned into itself again for the distinction is distinction in itself that is the distinction is directly distinguished merely from itself and is thus the unity returned into itself there are thus three moments to be distinguished imminent absolute being explicit self-existence which is the antithesis the express otherness of being and for which that being is object and self-existence or self-knowledge in that other in that antithetic expression the absolute being beholds only itself in its self-existence in its objective otherness in thus emptying itself in this kenosis it is merely within itself the independent self-existence which excludes itself from absolute being is the knowledge of itself on the part of absolute being it is the word the logos which when spoken empties the speaker of himself outwardizes him and leaves him behind emptied but is at the same time immediately heard and understood and only this act of hearing or perceiving himself is the actual existence of the word hence then the distinctions which are set up are immediately resolved just as they are made and are directly made just as they are resolved and the truth and the reality consist precisely in this self-closed circular process this movement within itself is what the absolute being qua spirit expresses absolute being when not grasped as spirit is merely an empty abstraction just as spirit which is not grasped as a process in this way is merely an empty word since its moments are taken purely as moments they are notions in restless activity which are merely in being inherently their own opposite and in finding their rest in the whole but the presentative pictorial thought of the religious communion is not this conceptual thinking it has the content without its necessity and instead of the form of the notion it brings into the realm of pure consciousness the natural relations of father and son 
since it thus even when thinking proceeds by way of figurative ideas absolute being is indeed revealed to it but the moments of this being owing to this externally synthetic presentational thinking fall of themselves apart from one another so that they are not related to each other through their own very notion while again this figurative thinking retreats from the pure object it deals with and takes up a merely external relation towards it the object is externally revealed to it from an alien source and in this thought of spirit it does not find its own self does not recognize the nature of pure self-consciousness in so far as the form of presentative thinking and that way of thinking by means of relationships derived from nature have to be transcended and especially the methods of taking the moments of the process in which the life of spirit consists as isolated fixed immovable substances or subjects instead of transient moments this transcendence is to be looked at as a compulsion on the part of the notion in the way we formerly pointed out when dealing with another aspect but since it is only an instinct it mistakes its own real character rejects the content along with the form and what comes to the same thing degrades the content into a historical imaginative idea and an heirloom handed down by tradition in this way there is retained and preserved only what is purely external to the sphere of belief and hence a lifeless entity devoid of knowledge while the inner element in belief has passed away because this would be the notion knowing itself as notion the absolute spirit ideally presented in pure ultimate being is indeed not the abstract pure being rather just by the fact that this is merely a moment in the life of spirit it is lowered to the level of constituent element the representation of spirit in this element however has inherently the same defect as regards form which ultimate being as such has ultimate being is abstraction and therefore the negative of its simplicity is an other in the same way spirit in the element of ultimate being is the form of simple unity which on that account is essentially and at the same time a process of turning to otherness or what is the same thing the relation of the eternal being to its self-existence its objective existence for itself is that of pure thought a directly simple relation in this simple beholding of itself in the other otherness is not as such set up independently it is distinction in the way distinction in pure thought is immediately no distinction a recognition of love where lover and beloved are not in their very being opposed to each other at all spirit which is expressed in the element of pure thought is essentially just this not to be merely in that element but to be concrete actual for otherness that is cancelling and superseding pure conception thought constituted conception lies in the very notion of spirit the element of pure thought because it is an abstract element is itself rather the other of its own simplicity and hence passes over into ideal presentation proper the element where the moments of the pure notion at once preserve a substantial existence in opposition to each other and are subjects as well which do not exist for a third thing in indifference towards each other but being reflected into themselves break away from one another and stand confronting each other merely eternal or abstract spirit then becomes an other to itself it enters existence and in the first instance enters immediate existence it creates a world this creation is the word which pictorial presentative thought uses to convey the absolute movement which the notion itself goes through or to express the fact that the absolutely simple or pure thought because it is abstract thought is really the negative and hence opposed to itself the other of itself or because to state the same in another way what is put forward as ultimate being is simple immediacy bare objective existence but qua immediacy or existence is without self and lacking thus inwardness is passive or has a relative existence exists for another this relative existence is at the same time a world 
spirit in the character of existing for another is the undisturbed separate subsistence of those moments formerly enclosed within pure thought is therefore the dissolution of their simple universality and their dispersion into their own particularity the world however is not merely spirit thus thrown out and scattered in all its plenitude with an external order imposed on it for since spirit is essentially simple self this self is likewise present therein it is objectively existent spirit which is individual self that has consciousness and distinguishes itself as other as world from itself in the way this individual self is thus immediately established at first it is not yet conscious of being spirit it thus does not exist as spirit it may be called innocent but not strictly good in order that in fact it may be self and spirit it has first to become objectively an other to itself in the same way that the eternal being manifests itself as the process of being self-identical in its otherness since this spirit is determined as only immediately existing or dispersed in the diverse multiplicity of its conscious life its becoming other means that knowledge is centred on itself concentrates itself upon its subjective content immediate existence turns into thought or merely sense consciousness turns round into consciousness of thought and moreover because that thought has come from immediacy or is conditioned thought it is not pure knowledge but thought which contains otherness and is thus the self-opposed thought of good and evil man is pictorially represented by the religious mind in this way it happened once as an event with no necessity about it that he lost the form of harmonious unity with himself by plucking the fruits of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and was driven from the state of conscious innocence from paradise from the garden with all its creatures and from nature offering its bounties without man's toil since this self-centredness on the part of the existent consciousness directly gives rise to disharmony with itself evil appears as the first actual expression of the self-centred consciousness and because the thoughts of good and evil are utterly opposed and this opposition is not yet broken down this consciousness is essentially and merely evil at the same time however owing to just this very opposition there is present also the good consciousness opposing the one that is evil and again their relation to each other in so far as immediate existence turns round into thought and self-absorption self-centredness is just thought while again the transition to otherness on the part of being is thereby more precisely determined the fact of becoming evil can be removed further backwards away out of the actually existing world and transferred to the very earliest realm of thought it may thus be said that it was the very first-born son of light lucifer who by becoming self-centred fell but that in his place another was at once created such a form of expression as fallen belonging merely to figurative thought and not to the notion just like the term sun once more transmutes and lowers the moments of the notion to the level of imaginative thought or in other words drags pictures and presentations into the realm of thought in the same way it is matter of indifference to coordinate a multiplicity of other angelic shapes and forms with the simple thought of otherness in the being of the eternal and transfer to them that condition of self-centredness this coordination must all the same win approval for the reason that through it this moment of otherness does express diversity as it should do not indeed as plurality in general but as determinate diversity so that one part is the sun that which is simple and knows itself to be ultimate being while the other part involves the abandonment the emptying of self-existence and merely lives to praise that being to this part may then also be assigned the resumption once again of the self-existence relinquished and that self-centredness characteristic of evil 
in so far as this condition of otherness falls into two parts spirit might as regards its moments be more exactly expressed numerically as a quaternity a four in one or because the multiplicity breaks up itself again into two parts that is one part which has remained good the other which has become evil might be expressed as a quinity counting the moments however can be regarded as altogether useless since for one thing what is distinguished is itself just as truly one and single that is the thought of distinction which is only one thought as the thoughts is this element distinguished the second over against the first for another thing it is useless to count because the thought which grasps the many in one has to be dissolved out of its universality and must be distinguished into more than three or four distinct components this universality appears in contrast to the absolute determinateness of the abstract unit the principle of number as indeterminateness in relation to number as such so that we can only speak in this connection of numbers in general that is not of a specific number of distinctions hence in general it is here quite superfluous to think of number and counting just as in other connections the bare difference of magnitude and multitude says nothing at all and falls outside conceptual thought good and evil were the specific distinctions of thought which we found since their opposition is not yet broken down and they are represented as essential realities of thought each of them independent by itself man is the self with no essential reality of his own and the mere ground which keeps them together and on which they exist and war with one another but these universal powers of good and evil belong all the same to the self or the self is their actualizing principle from this point of view it thus comes about that as evil is nothing else than the natural existence of spirit becoming self-absorbed and self-centred conversely good enters into actual reality and appears as an objectively existing self-consciousness the idea of the transition of the divine being into otherness is in general merely indicated and hinted at when spirit is interpreted in terms of pure thoughts for figurative thinking this idea here comes nearer its realization the realization is taken to consist in the divine being humbling itself and renouncing its abstract nature and unreality the other aspect that of evil is taken by imagination as an event extraneous and alien to the divine being to grasp evil in the divine being as the wrath of god that is the supreme effort the severest strain of which figurative thought wrestling with its own limitations is capable an effort which since it dispenses with the notion remains a fruitless struggle the alienation of the divine nature is thus set up in its double-sided form the self of spirit and its simple thought are the two moments whose absolute unity is spirit itself its alienation with itself consists in the two falling apart from each other and in the one having an unequal value as against the other this disparateness is therefore twofold in character and two connections arise which have in common the moments just given in the one the divine being stands for what is essential while natural existence and the self are unessential and are to be cancelled in the other on the contrary it is self-existence which passes for what is essential and the divine pure and simple for unessential their mediating though empty ground is existence in general the bare community of their two moments the dissolution of this opposition does not take effect through the struggle between the two elements which are represented as separate and independent beings just in virtue of their independence each must inherently through its own notion dissolve itself in itself the struggle takes place first in that quarter where both cease to be this mixture of thought and independent existence and confront each other merely as thoughts for in that case being determinate notions they essentially exist merely in the relation of opposition qua independent on the other hand they have their essential nature outside opposition 
their movement is thus free self-determined and peculiar to themselves just as this movement then of both is inherently movement because it has to be regarded in themselves it is set going only by that element of the two which has the character of being inherently essential as contrasted with the other this is represented as a spontaneous action but the necessity for its self-abandonment lies in the notion that what is inherently essential and gets this specific character merely through opposition has just on that account no real independent subsistence therefore that element which has for its essence not independent self-existence but simple being is what empties and abandons itself gives itself unto death and so reconciles absolute being with its own self for in this process it manifests itself as spirit the abstract being is estranged from itself it has natural existence and actual individual reality this its otherness or its being sensuously present is taken back again by the second process of self-abandonment of becoming other and is affirmed as superseded as universal thereby the divine being has come to itself in the sphere of the sensuous present the immediate existence of actual reality has ceased to be something alien or external to the divine by being sublated by its becoming universal this death of immediacy is therefore its rising anew as spirit when the self-conscious being cancels and transcends its immediate present it is universal self-consciousness this notion of the transcended individual self which is absolute being immediately expresses therefore the establishment of a communion which while hitherto having its abode in the sphere of pictorial presentation now returns into itself as the self and spirit thus passes from the second element constituting it figurative presentation and goes over to the third self-consciousness as such if we further consider the kind of procedure that presentative thinking adopts as it goes along we find in the first place the expression that the divine being puts on human nature here it is eo ipso asserted that implicitly and inherently the two are not separate just as in the statement that the divine being from the beginning empties itself of itself that its objective existence is self-absorbed centres in itself and becomes evil it is not asserted but implied that per se this evil existence is not something alien to the divine nature absolute being would be merely an empty name if in very truth there were any other being external to it if there were an absolute fall from it the aspect of self-centeredness self-absorption really constitutes the essential moment of the self of spirit that this self-centeredness whence primarily comes its reality belongs to the divine being while this is for us a notion and so as far as it is a notion appears to the presentative thinking as an inconceivable historical fact the inherent and essential nature assumes for figurative thought the form of a bare objective fact external and indifferent to god the thought however that those apparently mutually repugnant moments absolute being and self-existent self are not inseparable comes also before this figurative way of thinking since it does possess the real content but that thought appears afterwards in the form that the divine being empties itself of itself and is made flesh this figurative idea which in this way is still immediate and hence not spiritual that is it takes the human form assumed by the divine to be merely in the first instance a particular form not yet a universal form becomes spiritual for this consciousness in the process whereby god who has assumed shape and form surrenders again his external his immediate existence and returns to his inner being the divine being is then spirit when it is reflected into itself the reconciliation of the divine being with its antithesis as a whole and specifically with the thought of this other evil is thus presented here in a figurative way when this reconciliation is expressed conceptually by saying it consists in the fact that evil is inherently the same as what goodness is 
or again that the divine being is the same as nature in its entire extent just as nature separated from god is simply nothingness then this must be looked at as an unspiritual mode of expression which is bound to give rise to misunderstandings when evil is the same as goodness then evil is just not evil nor goodness good on the contrary both are really done away with evil in general self-centred self-existence and goodness selfless simple abstraction since in this way they are both expressed in terms of their notion the unity of the two is at once apparent for self-centred self-existence is simple knowledge and what is selfless simple abstraction is as much pure self-existence centred within itself hence if it must be said that good and evil in their conception that is so far as they are not good and evil are the same just as certainly it must be said that they are not the same but absolutely different for simple self-existence or again pure knowledge is equally pure negativity or per se absolute distinction it is only these two propositions that make the whole complete and when the first is asserted and asseverated it must be met and opposed by insisting on the other with immovable obstinacy since both are equally right they are both equally wrong and their wrong consists in taking such abstract forms as the same and not the same identity and non-identity to be something true fixed real and in resting on them neither the one nor the other has truth their truth is just their movement the process in which simple sameness is abstraction and thus absolute distinction while this again being distinction per se is distinguished from itself and so is self-identity precisely this is what we have in the case of the sameness of the divine being and nature in general and human nature in particular the former is nature so far as it is not essentially being nature is divine in its essential being but it is in spirit that we find both abstract aspects affirmed as they truly are that is as cancelled and preserved at once and this way of affirming them cannot be expressed by the judgment by the soulless word is the copula of the judgment in the same way nature is nothing outside its essential being god but this nothing itself is all the same it is absolute abstraction pure thought or self-centredness and with its moment of opposition to spiritual unity it is the principle of evil the difficulty people find in these conceptions is due solely to sticking to the term is and forgetting the character of thought where the moments as much are as they are not are the process which is spirit it is this spiritual unity unity where the distinctions are merely in the form of moments or are transcended and maintained which became known to presentative thinking in that atoning reconciliation spoken of above and since this unity is the universality of self-consciousness self-consciousness has ceased to be figurative or pictorial in its thinking the process has turned back into it spirit thus takes up its position in the third element in universal self-consciousness spirit is its own community the movement of this community being that of self-consciousness which distinguishes itself from its figurative idea consists in explicitly bringing out what has implicitly become established the dead divine man or human god is implicitly universal self-consciousness he has to become explicitly so for this self-consciousness or since this self-consciousness constitutes one side of the opposition involved in ideal presentation that is the side of evil which takes natural existence and individual self-existence to be the essential reality this aspect which is presented as independent and not yet as a moment has on account of its independence to raise itself in and for itself to the level of spirit it has to reveal the process of spirit in this aspect this particular self-consciousness is spirit in natural form natural spirit self has to withdraw from this natural existence and enter into itself become self-centred 
that means it has to become evil but this aspect is already per se evil entering into itself consists therefore in persuading itself that natural thinking is what is evil by presentational picture thinking the world is supposed actually to become evil and be evil as an actual fact and the atoning reconcilement of the absolute being is viewed as an actual existent phenomenon by self-consciousness as such however this figurative presentation of the truth as regards its form is considered to be merely a moment that is already superseded and transcended for the self is the principle of negation and hence knowledge a knowledge which is a pure act of consciousness within itself this moment of the negative must in like manner find expression as regards the content since that is to say the absolute being is inherently and from the start reconciled with itself and is a spiritual unity in which the parts constituting the presentation are sublated are moments what we find is that each element of the presentation receives here the opposite significance to that which it had before by this means each meaning finds its completion in the other and the content is then and thereby a spiritual content since the specific determinateness of each is just as much its opposite unity in otherness spiritual reality is achieved and completed just as formerly we saw opposite meanings combined and united objectively or in themselves and even the abstract forms of the same and not the same identity and non-identity cancelled one another and were transcended if then from the point of view of figurative thought the natural self-consciousness rooted and fixed in itself was the real evil that process of becoming fixed in itself is in the sphere of self-consciousness the knowledge of evil as something that per se belongs to existence this knowledge is certainly a process of becoming evil but merely of the thought of evil and is therefore recognized as the first moment of reconciliation for being a return into self out of the immediacy of nature which is specifically the principle of evil it is a forsaking of that immediacy and a dying to sin it is not natural existence as such that consciousness forsakes but natural existence that is at the same time known to be evil the immediate process of fixing itself within itself of becoming self-centred is just as much immediate process it presupposes itself that is is its own ground and principle the reason for fixing itself in self is because nature has per se already done so on account of evil man must be turned back into himself but evil is itself the process of doing so of fixing himself in self this first movement is just on that account itself merely immediate is its bare and simple notion because it is the same as what its ground or reason is the movement or the process of passing into otherness must therefore come out afterwards in its own more peculiar form beside this immediacy then the mediation of ideal presentation is necessary implicitly and essentially the knowledge of nature as the untrue inadequate expression of spirit's existence and this universality of self which has thereby arisen within the life of the self these constitute the reconciliation of spirit with itself this implicit state is apprehended by the self-consciousness that does not think conceptually in the form of an objective existence and as something presented to it figuratively conceptual comprehension begreifen therefore does not mean for it a grasping ergreifen of this conception begrif, which knows natural existence when cancelled and transcended to be universal and thus reconciled with itself but rather a laying hold of that ideal presentation the imaginative idea Vorstellung, that the divine being is reconciled with its existence through an event the event of god's emptying himself of himself relinquishing his divine being through his factual incarnation and his death the laying hold of this idea now expresses more specifically what was formerly called in figurative thinking spiritual resurrection 
or the process by which god's individual self-consciousness becomes the universal becomes the religious communion the death of the divine man qua death is abstract negativity the immediate result of the process which terminates only in the universality belonging to nature in spiritual self-consciousness death loses its natural significance it passes into its true principle or conception the conception just mentioned death then ceases to signify what it means directly the non-existence of this particular individual and becomes transformed and transfigured into the universality of spirit which lives in its own communion dies there daily and daily rises again that which belongs to the sphere of pictorial thought that is that absolute spirit qua individual or rather qua particular embodies and presents in its objective existence the nature of spirit is thus here transferred to self-consciousness itself to the sphere where knowledge maintains itself in its otherness in its opposite this self-consciousness does not therefore really die as the particular person is represented to have really died its particularity succumbs and expires in its universality that is in its knowledge which is true being reconciling itself with itself that primary and prior element of presentative thinking is thus here set forth as transcendent as in other words returned into the self into its notion what was in the former merely an existent entity has come to assume the form of subject by that very fact the first element too pure thought and the spirit eternal therein are no longer away beyond and outside the mind thinking pictorially nor beyond the self rather the return of the whole into itself consists just in containing all moments within itself when the death of the mediator is laid hold of by the self brought within its grasp this means the sublation and transcendence of his factuality of his particular independent existence this particular self-existence has become universal self-consciousness on the other side the universal just because of this is self-consciousness and the pure or abstract unreal spirit of bare thought has become concrete and actual the death of the mediator is death not merely of his natural aspect of his particular self-existence what dies is not merely the outer encasement which being stripped of true being is eo ipso dead but also the abstraction of the divine being for the mediator as long as his death has not yet accomplished the reconciliation is something one-sided which takes as true being the simple abstract element of thought not concrete reality this one-sided extreme of self has not yet equal worth and value with ultimate being the self first gets this as spirit when the mediator as imaginatively presented dies his death implies at the same time the death of the mere abstraction of divine being which is not yet affirmed as a self that death is the bitterness and pain of the unhappy consciousness when it feels that god himself is dead this harsh utterance is the expression of inmost self-knowledge which has self bare and simple for its content it is the return of the consciousness into the depth of darkness where ego is nothing but bare identity of ego a darkness distinguishing and knowing nothing more outside it this feeling thus means in point of fact the loss of the substance and of its objective existence over against consciousness but at the same time it is the pure subjectivity of substance the pure certainty and inner assurance of itself which it lacked when it was object or immediacy pure ultimate being this knowledge is thus the process of spiritualization whereby substance becomes subject by which its abstraction and lifelessness have expired and substance therefore has become concrete and real simple universal self-consciousness in this way then spirit is spirit knowing its own self it knows itself that which is for it object exists or in other words its objectively presented idea is the true absolute content as we saw the content expresses just spirit itself 
it is at the same time not merely content of self-consciousness and not merely object for self-consciousness it is also concrete actual spirit it is this by the fact of its passing through and realizing the three elements of its nature this movement through the content of its whole self in this way constitutes its actual reality what moves itself that is spirit it is the subject of the movement and it is likewise the moving process itself or the substance through which the subject makes its way we saw how the notion of spirit arose when we entered the sphere of religion it was the process of self-assured spirit which forgives and pardons evil and in so doing puts aside its own simplicity of nature and rigid unchangeableness it was to state it otherwise the process in which what is absolutely in opposition recognizes itself as the same as its opposite and this knowledge breaks out into the yea yea with which one extreme meets the other the religious consciousness to which the absolute being is revealed sees this notion and does away with the distinction of its self from what it beholds and as it is subject so it is also substance and is thus itself spirit just because and in so far as it is this process this religious communion however has not yet achieved its complete self-consciousness its content in general is put before it in the form of an objective pictorial idea so that this disruption or opposition still attaches even to the actual spiritual character of the communion to its return out of its presentative way of thinking just as the element of pure thought itself was also hampered with that opposition this spiritual communion too is not aware what it is it is spiritual self-consciousness which is not object to itself in this form or does not develop into clear consciousness of itself rather so far as it is consciousness it has before it ideal presentations those picture thoughts which were considered we see self-consciousness at its last turning point become inward to itself and attain to knowledge of its inner being of its self-centredness we see it relinquish and empty itself of its natural existence and reach pure negativity but the positive significance that is that this negativity or pure inwardness of knowledge is just as much the self-identical absolute being put otherwise that substance has here attained to being absolute self-consciousness this is for the devotional consciousness an objective other something external it grasps this aspect that the knowledge which becomes purely inward is inherently absolute simplicity or substance as the idea of something which is not thus by its very conception but as the act of satisfaction obtained from an other in other words it is not really aware as a fact that this depth of pure self is the power by which the abstract ultimate being is drawn down from its abstractness and raised to the level of self by the strength and force of this pure devotion the action of the self hence retains towards it this negative significance because the relinquishment of itself on the part of substance is for the self an ultimate reality something per se the self does not at once grasp and comprehend it or does not find it in its own action as such since this unity of ultimate being and self has been essentially and inherently brought about consciousness too has this idea of its reconciliation but in the form of an imaginative idea it obtains satisfaction by attaching in an external way to its pure negativity the positive significance of the unity of itself with absolute being its satisfaction thus itself remains hampered with the opposition of an external beyond its own peculiar reconciliation therefore enters its consciousness as something remote something far away in the future just as the reconciliation which the other self achieved appears as away in the distance of the past 
just as the individual god-man has an implicit a potential father and only an actual mother in like manner we may say the universal god-man the spiritual communion has as its father its own proper action and knowledge while its mother is eternal love which it merely feels but does not behold as an actual immediate object present in its consciousness its reconciliation therefore is in its heart but still with its conscious life sundered in twain and its actual reality shattered what falls within its consciousness as the inherent and essential element the aspect of pure mediation is the reconciliation that lies beyond while what appears as actually present in its consciousness as the aspect of immediacy and of existence is the world which has yet to await transfiguration the world is no doubt implicitly reconciled with the divine being and that being no doubt knows that it no longer regards the object as alienated from itself but as one with itself in its love but for self-consciousness this immediate presence has not yet the form and shape of spiritual reality thus the spirit of the communion is in its immediate consciousness separated from its religious consciousness which declares indeed that these two modes of consciousness implicitly and inherently are not separated but this is an implicitness which is not realized or has not yet become an absolute explicit self-existence as well end of section twenty eight Section 29 of the Phenomenology of Mind, Volume 2, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Translated by James Black Bailey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter 8. Absolute Knowledge. The spirit manifested in revealed religion has not as yet surmounted its attitude of consciousness as such, or what is the same thing, its concrete self-consciousness is not at this stage the object it is aware of. Spirit as a whole, and the moments distinguished in it, fall within the sphere of presentative thinking, or presentations with the form of objectivity. The content of this presentational thought is absolute spirit. All that remains to be done now is to cancel and transcend this bare form, or better, because the form appertains to consciousness as such its true meaning must have come out in the shapes and modes consciousness has already assumed the surmounting of the object of consciousness in this way is not to be taken one-sidedly as meaning that the object shows itself returning into the self it has a more definite and specific meaning it means that the object as such presents itself to the self as a vanishing factor and furthermore that the emptying the relinquishment of self-consciousness itself establishes thinghood and that this laying aside of self-consciousness has not merely negative but positive significance a significance not merely for us or per se but for self-consciousness itself the negative of the object its cancelling its own existence gets for self-consciousness a positive significance or self-consciousness knows this nothingness of the object because on the one hand self-consciousness itself relinquishes itself for in doing so it establishes itself as object or by reason of the indivisible unity characterizing its self-existence sets up the object as its self on the other hand there is also this other moment in the process that self-consciousness has just as really cancelled and done away with this self-relinquishment and objectification and has resumed them into itself and is thus at home with itself in its otherness this is the movement of consciousness and in this process consciousness is the totality of its moments consciousness at the same time had to take up a relation to the object in all its aspects and phases and grasp its meaning from the point of view of each of them this totality of its determinate characteristics makes the object per se and inherently a spiritual reality and it becomes so in truth for consciousness when the latter apprehends every individual one of them as self that is when it takes up towards them the spiritual relationship just spoken of the object is then partly immediate existence a thing in general 
corresponding to immediate consciousness partly an alteration of itself its relatedness or existence for another and existence for self determinateness corresponding to perception partly essential being or in the form of a universal corresponding to intelligence or understanding the object as a whole is the mediated result the conclusion or the passing of universality into individuality through specification as also the reverse process from individual to universal through cancelled individuality or specific determination these three specific aspects then determine the ways in which consciousness must get to know the object in the form of self this knowledge of which we are speaking is however not knowledge in the sense of pure conceptual comprehension of the object here this knowledge is to be taken as a developing process has to be taken in its various moments and set forth in the manner appropriate to consciousness as such and the moments of the notion proper of pure and absolute knowledge are to assume the form of modes or attitudes of consciousness for that reason the object does not yet when present in consciousness as such appear as the inner essence of spirit in the way this has just been expressed the procedure consciousness adopts in regard to the object is not that of considering it either in this totality as such or in the pure conceptual form it is partly that of a mode or attitude of consciousness in general partly a multitude of such modes which we who analyze the process gather together and in which the totality of the moments of the object and of the procedure of consciousness can be shown merely resolved into their separate elements to understand this method of grasping the object where apprehension is a form or mode of consciousness we have here only to recall the previous form of consciousness which came before us earlier in the argument as regards the object then so far as it is immediate an indifferent objective entity we saw reason at the stage of observation seeking and finding itself in this indifferent thing that is we saw it conscious that its activity is there of an external sort and at the same time conscious of the object merely as an immediate object we saw too its specific character take expression at its highest stage in the infinite judgment the being of the ego is a thing and further the ego is an immediate thing of sense when ego is called a soul it is indeed represented also as a thing but a thing in the sense of something invisible impalpable etc that is in fact not as an immediate entity and not as that which is generally understood by a thing that judgment then ego is a thing taken at first glance has no spiritual content or rather is just the absence of spirituality in its conception however it is in fact the most luminous and illuminating judgment and this its inner significance which is not yet made evident is what the two other moments to be considered express the thing is ego in point of fact thing is transcended in this infinite judgment the thing is nothing in itself it only has significance in a relation only through the ego and its reference to the ego this moment came before consciousness in pure insight and enlightenment things are simply and solely useful profitable and only to be considered from the point of view of their utility the trained and cultivated self-consciousness which has traversed the region of spirit in self-alienation has by giving up itself produced the thing as its self it retains itself therefore still in the thing and knows the thing to have no independence in other words knows that the thing has essentially and solely a relative existence or again to give complete expression to the relationship that is to what here alone constitutes the nature of the object the thing stands for something that is self-existent sense certainty sense experience is announced as absolute truth but this self-existence is itself declared to be a moment which merely disappears and passes into its opposite into a being at the mercy of an other but knowledge of the thing is not yet finished at this point 
the thing must become known as self not merely in regard to the immediateness of its being and as regards specific determinateness but also in the sense of essence or inner reality this is found in the case of moral self-consciousness this mode of experience thinks of its knowledge as the absolute essential element knows no other objective being than pure will or pure knowledge it is nothing but merely this will and this knowledge any other possesses merely non-essential being that is being that has no inherent nature per se but only its empty husk in so far as the moral consciousness in its view of the world lets existence drop out of the self it just as truly reclaims and takes this existence back again into the self in the form of conscience finally it is no longer this incessant alternation between the placing and the displacing dissembling of existence and self it knows that its existence as such is this pure certainty of its own self the objective element into which qua acting it puts forth itself is nothing else than pure knowledge of itself by itself these are the moments which compose the reconciliation of spirit with its own consciousness proper by themselves they are particular and separate and it is their spiritual unity alone which furnishes the power for this reconciliation the last of these moments is however necessarily this unity itself and as we see binds them all in fact into itself spirit certain of itself in its objective existence takes as the element of its existence nothing else than this knowledge of self the declaration that what it does it does in accordance with the convictions of duty this statement is the warrant for its own action and makes good its conduct action is the first inherent division of the simple unity of the notion and the return out of this division this first movement turns round into the second since the element of recognition is put forward as simple knowledge of duty in contrast to the distinction and diremption that lie in action as such and in this way form a rigid reality confronting action in pardon however we saw how this rigid fixity gave way and renounced its claims reality has here qua immediate existence no other significance for self-consciousness than that of being pure knowledge similarly qua determinate existence or qua relation what is self-opposed is a knowledge partly of this purely individual self partly of knowledge qua universal herein it is established at the same time that the third moment universality or the essence means for each of the two opposite factors merely knowledge finally they also cancel the empty opposition that still remains and are the knowledge of ego as identical with ego this individual self which is immediately pure knowledge or universal this reconciliation of consciousness with self-consciousness thus proves to be brought about in a double-sided way in the one case in the religious mind in the other case in consciousness itself as such they are distinguished inter se by the fact that the one is this reconciliation in the form of implicit immanence the other in the form of explicit self-existence as we have considered them they at the beginning fall apart in the order in which the modes or types of consciousness came before us consciousness has reached the individual moments of that order and also their unification long before ever religion gave its object the shape and mould of actual self-consciousness the unification of both aspects is not yet brought to light it is this that winds up this series of embodiments of spiritual life for in it spirit gets to the point where it knows itself not only as it is inherently in itself or in terms of its absolute content nor only as it is objectively for itself in terms of its bare form devoid of content or in terms of self-consciousness but as it is in its self-completeness as it is inherently and explicitly in itself and for itself this unification has however already taken place by implication and has done so in religion in the return of the objective presentation into self-consciousness 
but not according to the proper form for the religious aspect is the aspect of the essentially independent an sich, and stands in contrast to the process of self-consciousness the unification therefore belongs to this other aspect which by contrast is the aspect of reflection into self is that side which contains its self and its opposite and contains them not only implicitly an sich, or in a general way but explicitly für sich, or expressly developed and distinguished the content as well as the other aspect of self-conscious spirit so far as it is the other aspect have been brought to light and are here in their completeness the unification still a wanting is the simple unity of the notion this notion is also already given with the aspect of self-consciousness but as it previously came before us above it like all the other moments has the form of being a particular mode or type of consciousness it is that part of the embodiment of self-assured spirit which keeps within its essential principle and was called the beautiful soul that is to say the beautiful soul is its own knowledge of itself in its pure transparent unity self-consciousness which knows this pure knowledge of pure inwardness to be spirit is not merely intuition of the divine but the self-intuition of god himself since this notion keeps itself fixedly opposed to its realization it is the one-sided form which we saw before disappear into thin air but also take a positive external embodiment and advance further through the process of realization this self-consciousness bereft of objective content ceases to hold fast by itself the abstract determinateness of the notion over against its fulfilment is cancelled and done away with its self-consciousness attains the form of universality and what remains is its true notion the notion that has attained its realization the notion in its truth that is in unity with its externalization it is knowledge of pure knowledge not in the sense of an abstract essence such as duty is but in the sense of an essential being which is this particular knowledge this individual pure self-consciousness which is at the same time an object for the object is the self-existing self this notion obtained its fulfilment partly from the acts performed by the spirit that is sure of itself partly from religion in the latter it obtained the absolute content qua content or in the form of an ideal presentation or of otherness for consciousness on the other hand in the first the form is just the self for that mode contains the active practical spirit sure of itself the self accomplishes the life of absolute spirit this mode as we see is that simple notion which however gives up its eternal inner being takes upon itself objective existence or acts the power of diremption or of coming forth out of its inwardness lies in the purity of the notion for this purity is absolute abstraction or negativity in the same way the notion finds its element of reality or the objective being it contains in pure knowledge itself for this knowledge is simple immediacy which is being and existence as well as essence the former negative thought the latter positive thought this existence finally is just as much that state of reflection into self which comes out of pure existence both qua existence and qua duty and this is the state of evil this process of going into self constitutes the opposition lying in the notion and is thus the appearance on the scene of pure knowledge of the essence a knowledge giving rise to no action and no reality but to make its appearance in this opposition is to participate in it pure knowledge of essence has inherently relinquished its simplicity for it is the diremption or negativity which constitutes a notion so far as this process of diremption is the process of becoming self-centred it is the principle of evil so far as it is the inherently essential it is the principle of constant goodness now what in the first instance takes place implicitly and inherently is at once objectively for consciousness and is duplicated as well 
is both for consciousness and is its self-existence or its own proper action the same thing that is already inherently established thus repeats itself now as knowledge thereof on the part of consciousness and as conscious action each finds the other lay aside the independence of character with which each appears confronting the other this waving of independence is the same renunciation of the one-sidedness of the notion as constituted implicitly the beginning but it is now its own act of renunciation just as the notion renounced its own notion that implicit nature of the beginning is in truth as much mediated because it is negativity it now establishes itself as it is in its truth and the negative element exists as a determinate quality which each has for the other and is inherently and essentially self-cancelling self-transcending the one of the two parts of the opposition is the disparity between existence within itself in its individuality and universality the other disparity between its abstract universality and the self the former lets its self-existence perish and relinquishes itself makes confession the latter renounces the rigidity of its abstract universality and thereby puts away its lifeless self and its inert universality so that the former is completed through the moment of universality which is the essence and the latter through universality which is the self by this process of action spirit has come to light in the form of pure universality of knowledge which is self-consciousness as self-consciousness which is simple unity of knowledge it is through action that spirit is spirit so as definitely to exist it raises its existence into the sphere of thought and hence into absolute opposition and returns out of it through and within this very opposition thus then what was in the case of religion objective content or a way of ideally presenting an other is here the action proper of the self the notion is the connecting principle securing that the content is the action proper of the self for this notion is as we see the knowledge that the action of the self within itself is all that is essential and all existence the knowledge of the subject as substance and of the substance as this knowledge of its action what we have done here in addition is simply to gather together the particular moments each of which in principle exhibits the life of spirit in its entirety and again to fix and secure the notion in the form of the notion whose content was disclosed in those moments and had already presented itself in the form of a mode or type of consciousness this last embodiment of spirit spirit which at once gives its complete and true content the form of self and thereby realizes its notion and in doing so remains within its own notion this is absolute knowledge it is spirit knowing itself in the form of spirit it is conceptual comprehensive knowledge through notions truth is here not merely in itself absolutely identical with certainty it has also the typical form of certainty of self or in its existence that is for spirit knowing it it is in the form of knowledge of itself truth is the content which in the case of religion is not as yet at one with its certainty this identification however is secured when the content has received the form and character of self by this means what constitutes the very essence that is the notion comes to have the nature of existence that is assumes the form of what is objective to consciousness spirit appearing before consciousness in this element of existence or what is here the same thing produced by it in this element is systematic science the nature moments and process of this type of knowledge have then come about in such a way that this knowledge is pure self-existence of self-consciousness it is ego which is this concrete ego and no other and at the same time from its very nature is mediated or sublated universal ego it has a content which it distinguishes from itself for it is pure negativity or self diremption it is consciousness this content in its distinction is itself the ego for it is the process of superseding itself 
or the same pure negativity which constitutes ego ego is in it qua distinguished reflected into itself only then is the content conceptually comprehended begriffen, when ego in its otherness is still at home with itself more precisely stated this content is nothing else than the very process just spoken of for the content is the spirit which traverses the whole range of its own being and does this for itself qua spirit by the fact that it possesses the form of the notion in its objectivity as to the actual existence of this notion science does not appear in time and in reality till spirit has arrived at this stage of being conscious regarding itself qua spirit which knows what it is it did not exist before and is not to be found at all till after the completion of the task of mastering and overcoming the imperfection of its form the task of procuring for its consciousness and making itself aware of the shape of its inmost essence and in this manner squaring its self-consciousness with its consciousness spirit in and for itself spirit in its self-contained reality is when distinguished into its separate moments self-existent knowledge conceptual comprehension in general which as such has not yet reached the substance or is not in itself absolute knowledge now in actual reality the knowing substance is arrived at earlier than its form earlier than the form of the notion for the substance is the undeveloped inherent nature the fundamental notion in its inner simplicity the state of inwardness or the self of spirit not yet objectivified what is there what does exist is in the shape of unexpressed simplicity the undeveloped immediate or the object of presentative consciousness in general because knowledge erkennen is a spiritual state of consciousness which is only aware of what implicitly and inherently is so far as this is a being for the self and the being of the self or a notion knowledge has on this account merely a barren object to begin with in contrast to which the substance and the consciousness of this substance are richer in content revelation in such a case is in fact concealment for the substance is here still selfless existence and nothing but certainty of self is manifest or revealed to it to begin with therefore it is only the abstract moments that fall to self-consciousness when dealing with the substance but since these moments are pure activities and must move forward by their very nature self-consciousness enriches itself till it has torn from consciousness the entire substance and absorbed into itself the entire structure of the substance with all its constituent elements since this negative attitude towards objectivity is positive as well establishes and fixes the content it goes on till it has produced these elements out of itself and thereby reinstated them once more as objects of consciousness in the notion knowing itself as notion the moments thus make their appearance prior to the whole in its complete fulfilment the movement of these motions is the process by which the whole comes into being in consciousness on the other hand the whole but not as comprehended conceptually is prior to the moments time is just the notion definitely existent and presented to consciousness in the form of empty pure intuition hence spirit necessarily appears in time and it appears in time so long as it does not grasp its pure notion that is so long as it does not annul time time is the pure self in external form apprehended in intuition and not grasped and understood by the self it is the notion directly apprehended through intuition when this notion grasps itself it supersedes the time character conceptually comprehends intuition and is intuition comprehended and comprehending through conceptions time therefore appears as spirit's destiny and necessity where spirit is not yet complete within itself it is the necessity compelling spirit to increase and enrich the share self-consciousness has in consciousness to put into motion the immediacy of the inherent nature which is the form in which the substance is present in consciousness or conversely to realize and to make manifest what is inherent regarded as inward and immanent to make manifest that which is at first within 
that is to vindicate and secure for it the certainty of self for this reason it must be said that nothing is consciously known which does not fall within experience or as it is also expressed which is not felt to be true which is not given as an inwardly revealed eternal verity as a sacred object of belief or whatever other expressions we care to employ for experience just consists in this that the content and the content is spirit in its inherent nature is substance and so object of consciousness but this substance in which spirit consists is the development of itself explicitly to what it is inherently and implicitly and only by this process of reflecting itself into itself is it then essentially and in truth spirit it is inherently the movement which constitutes the process of knowledge the transforming of that implicit inherent nature into explicitness and objectivity of substance into subject of the object of consciousness into the object of self-consciousness that is into an object that is at the same time superseded and transcended in other words into the notion this transforming process is a cycle that returns into itself a cycle that presupposes its beginning and reaches its beginning only at the end so far as spirit then is of necessity this process of self-distinction it appears as a single whole intuitively apprehended over against its simple self-consciousness and since that whole is the aspect distinguished it is distinguished into the intuitively apprehended pure notion time and the content the inherent implicit nature substance qua subject involves the necessity at first an inner necessity to set forth in itself what it inherently is to show itself to be spirit the completed systematic expression in objective form becomes then at the same time the reflection of substance the development of it into a self or subject consequently until and unless spirit is inherently completed completed as a world spirit it cannot reach its completion as self-conscious spirit the content of religion therefore expresses earlier in time than speculative science what spirit is but science alone is the perfect form in which spirit truly knows itself the process of carrying forward this form of knowledge of itself constitutes the task which spirit accomplishes in the concrete actual shape of history the religious communion in so far as it is at the outset the substance of absolute spirit is the crude form of consciousness which has an existence all the harsher and more barbaric the deeper is its inner spirit and its inarticulate stolid self has all the harder task in dealing with its essence the unconceived content alien to its consciousness not till it has surrendered the hope of cancelling that foreignness by an external that is alien method does it turn to itself to its own peculiar world in the actual present it turns thither because to supersede that alien method means returning into self-consciousness it thus discovers this world in the living present to be its own property and so has taken the first step to descend from the ideal intelligible world the world of the intellect or rather to endue the abstract element of the intellect with concrete selfhood through observation on the one hand it finds existence in the shape of thought and comprehends existence and conversely it finds in its thought existence when in the first instance it has thus itself expressed in an abstract way the immediate unity of thought and existence of abstract being and self and when it has expressed the primal principle of light in a purer form that is as the unity of extension and existence for existence is an ultimate simple term more akin to thought than light and in this way has revived again in thought the substance of the orient the absolute substance of eastern religions thereupon spirit at once recoils in horror from this abstract unity from this selfless substance and maintains as against it the principle of subjective individuality but after spirit has relinquished this principle and brought it under the ordeal of culture has thereby made it an objective existence and established it throughout the whole of existence 
has arrived at the idea of utility and in the sphere of absolute freedom has found the key to existence to be individual will after these stages spirit then brings to light the thought that lies in its inmost depths and expresses ultimate reality in the form ego equals ego this ego identical with ego is however an inward self-reflecting process for since this identity qua absolute negativity is absolute distinction the self-identity of the ego stands in contrast to this absolute distinction which being pure distinction and at the same time objective to the self that knows itself has to be expressed as time in this way just as formerly ultimate reality was expressed as unity of thought and extension it would here be interpreted as unity of thought and time but distinction left to itself unresting unhalting time really collapses upon itself it is the objective quiescence the stable continuity of extension while this latter is pure identity with self is ego again ego is not merely self it is identity of self with itself this identity however is complete and immediate unity with self in other words this subject is just as much substance substance by itself alone would be void and empty intuition anschauen or the intuition of a content which qua specific would have merely a contingent character and would be devoid of necessity substance would only stand for the absolute in so far as substance was thought of or intuited as absolute unity and all content would as regards its diversity have to fall outside the substance and be due to reflection a process which does not belong to substance because substance would not be subject would not be conceived as spirit as reflecting about self and reflecting itself into self if nevertheless a content were to be spoken of then on the one hand it would only exist in order to be thrown into the empty abysm of the absolute while on the other it would be picked up in external fashion from sense perception knowledge would appear to have come by things by what is distinct from knowledge itself and to have got at the distinctions between the endless variety of things without any one understanding how or where all this came from spirit however has shown itself to be neither the mere withdrawal of self-consciousness into its pure inwardness nor the mere absorption of self-consciousness into blank substance devoid of all distinctions spirit is the movement of the self which empties itself of self and sinks itself within its own substance and qua subject both goes out of that substance into self making its substance an object and a content and also supersedes this distinction of objectivity and content that first reflection out of immediacy is the subject's distinction of self from its substance the notion in a state of self diremption the subjectification of the self and the coming of the pure ego into being since this distinction is the action pure and simple of ego equals ego the notion is the necessity for and the uprising of existence which has the substance for its essential nature and subsists on its own account but this subsisting of existence for itself is the notion established and realized in determinate form and is thereby the notion's own inherent movement that of descending into the bare and simple substance which is only subject by being this negativity and going through this process ego has not to take its stand on the form of self-consciousness in opposition to the form of substantiality and objectivity as if it were afraid of emptying itself and becoming objective the power of spirit lies rather in remaining one with itself when giving up itself and because it is self-contained and self-subsistent in establishing as mere moments its explicit self-existence as well as its implicit inherent nature nor again is ego a tertium quid which casts distinctions back into the abysm of the absolute and declares them all to mean the same there on the contrary true knowledge lies rather in the seeming inactivity 
which merely watches and considers how the element distinguished proceeds how it is self-moved by its very nature and returns again into its own unity with absolute knowledge then spirit has wound up the process of its various forms and modes so far as in assuming these various shapes and forms it is affected with the insurmountable distinction which consciousness implies that is the distinction of consciousness from its object or content spirit has attained the pure element of its existence the notion the content is in view of the freedom of its own existence the self that empties and gives up itself to objectivity in other words that content is the immediate unity of self-knowledge the pure process of thus relinquishing itself to externality constitutes when we consider this process in its bearing on the content the necessity of this content the diversity of content is qua determinate and specific due to relation and is not inherent it is its restless activity of cancelling and superseding itself or its negativity thus the necessity or diversity like its free existence is the self too and in this self form in which existence is immediately thought the content is a notion seeing then that spirit has attained the notion it unfolds its existence and develops its processes in this ether of its life and is systematic science the moments of its process are set forth in science no longer as determinate modes or forms of consciousness but since the distinction which consciousness implies has reverted to and has become a distinction within the self as determinate notions and as the organic self-explaining and self-constituted process of these conceptions while in the phenomenology of mind each moment is the distinction of knowledge and truth and the process in which that distinction is cancelled and transcended on the other hand systematic science does not contain this distinction and supersession of distinction rather since each moment has the form of the notion it unites the objective form of truth and the knowing self in an immediate unity in science the individual moment does not appear as the process of passing back and forward from consciousness or presentation to self-consciousness and conversely there the pure form liberated from the condition of being an appearance in mere consciousness the pure notion with its further development depends solely and purely on its characteristic and specific nature conversely again there corresponds to every abstract moment of absolute science a form or mode in which mind as a whole makes its appearance as the mind that actually exists and historically appears is not richer than science so too mind in its actual content is not poorer to know the pure notions of science in the form in which they are modes or types of consciousness this constitutes the aspect of their reality in which its essential element the notion appearing there in its simple mediating activity as thinking breaks up and separates the moments of this mediation and exhibits its content by reference to the internal and immanent opposition of its elements science contains within itself this necessity of relinquishing and divesting itself of the form of the pure notion and necessarily involves the transition of the notion into consciousness for spirit that knows itself is just for the reason that it grasps its own notion immediate identity with itself and this in the distinction it implies is the certainty of what is immediate or is sense consciousness the beginning from which we started this process of releasing itself from the form of its self is the highest freedom and security of its knowledge of itself all the same this relinquishment of self and abandonment to externality are still incomplete this process expresses the relation of the certainty of its self to the object an object which just by being in relation has not yet attained its full freedom systematic knowledge is aware not only of itself but also of the negative of itself or its limit knowing its limit means knowing how to sacrifice itself this sacrifice is the emptying of self the self-abandonment in which spirit sets forth in the form of free and unconstrained fortuitous contingency its process of becoming spirit intuitively apprehending outside it its pure self as time 
and likewise its existence as space this last form into which spirit passes nature is its living immediate process of development nature spirit divested of self and given over to externality is in its actual existence nothing but this external process of abandoning its own independent subsistence and the movement which reinstates subject the other aspect however in which spirit comes into being history is process in terms of knowledge a conscious self-mediating process spirit given over to and emptied into time but this form of abandonment is similarly an emptying of itself by itself the negative is negative of itself this way of becoming presents a tardy procession and succession of spiritual shapes and forms a gallery of pictures each of which is endowed with the entire wealth of spirit and moves so tardily just for the reason that the self has to permeate and assimilate all this wealth of its substance since its accomplishment consists in spirit knowing what it is in fully comprehending its substance this knowledge means its subjectification a state in which spirit leaves its external existence behind and gives itself over to the attitude of recollection erinnerung in this subjectification spirit is engulfed in the darkness and night of its own self-consciousness its vanished existence is however conserved therein and this superseded existence the previous state but born anew from the womb of knowledge is the new stage of existence a new world and a new type and mode of spirit here it has to begin all over again at its immediacy as freshly as before and thence rise once more to the measure of its stature as if for it all that preceded were lost and as if it had learned nothing from the experience of the spirits that preceded but recollection erinnerung has conserved that experience and is the inner being and in fact the higher form of the substance while then this phase of spirit begins all over again its formative development apparently starting solely from itself yet at the same time it commences at a higher level the realm of spirit developed in this way and assuming definite shape in existence constitutes a succession where one detaches and sets loose the other and each takes over from its predecessor the empire of the spiritual world the goal of the process is the revelation of the depth of spiritual life and this is the absolute notion this revelation consequently means superseding its depth is its extension or spatial embodiment the negation of this subjectivity of the ego a negativity which is its self-relinquishment its externalization or its substance and this revelation is also its temporal embodiment in that this externalization in its very nature relinquishes externalizes itself and so exists at once in its spatial extension as well as in its death or the self the goal which is absolute knowledge or spirit knowing itself as spirit finds its pathway in the recollection of spiritual forms as they are in themselves and as they accomplish the organization of their spiritual kingdom their conservation looked at from the side of their free phenomenal existence in the sphere of contingency is history looked at from the side of their conceptually comprehended organization it is the science of phenomenal knowledge or the ways in which knowledge appears both together or history comprehended conceptually form at once the recollection and the golgotha of absolute spirit the reality the truth the certainty of its throne without which it were lifeless solitary and alone only this chalice of god's plenitude yields foaming his infinitude end of section twenty nine this has been an audiobook recording by phone End of the Phenomenology of Mind, Volume 2, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Translated by James Black Bailey.